Ethereum. Is it going to the moon? Are we going to see a 5x or 10x? Are we going to see a $10,000 Ethereum this particular bull season? Well, let's have a look at Elliott Wave and Fibonacci to see because we're in the game of probabilities. We cannot tell for, for a fact what's going to happen, but we can look at what's highly probable. And that's what we're going to cover today, Ethereum, because Ethereum is a beast of a project. It is a blockchain where so many applications are being built. Now we've got Polygon, which is a layer two solution built Applications are going to be built on there, which is the underlying foundation of Ethereum. But today, we're going to focus on the technicals, the mass psychology of the markets, and let's just see if it can help us make good buying and selling decisions. So if you like today's video, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification, take my free crypto trading masterclass. It's in the link below. And if you're wondering who is this guy, this handsome, handsome guy, I am Jagir, the award-winning author of The Extraordinary New Venture Capital Opportunity, How to Invest Like a Pro. I've been trading the currency market for over 15 years and I bring that knowledge of wisdom to you in the crypto markets. I was featured in the best-selling book, High Probability Trading Strategies, back in 2008. Love this book, by the way. Um, but we're going to bring that knowledge and wisdom to Ethereum. So you would have seen my video. If we jump straight into the charts, you would have seen my video a few weeks back where I said, up here, so the market was unfolding, unfolding, and I said, look, Ethereum looks like it's making a wave five of a wave five of a wave five of a wave three, right? I think it was, I think it was five fives at the time, right? And it's a highly probable that we're going to hit a high and make a pullback. And what happened? You know, textbook style, we had this massive pullback, you know, is, uh, we're considering this a wave A of the initial part of the pullback. And then what I said was what we should anticipate is some type of wave B and then some type of wave C. So initially I was anticipating that this wave C was gonna happen around here, but it doesn't look like we're ready for that wave C. What looks like um, is, is likely, if we just jump into the weekly chart very quickly, uh, the main thing I wanna focus on the weekly chart is this momentum indicator, right? It is oversold, meaning it's, we should be anticipating buying opportunities, movements to the upside, at least for the next you know, three to five weeks, maybe even, maybe even three months, depending on how this unfolds. So then on the daily chart, Let's look at the indicators. Both the fast line and the, the slower indicator, both are bullish. So we should anticipate the next few days and maybe the next couple of weeks, more upside movement. So that gives us valuable information. So what does that tell me? That tells me that we're probably gonna see more of an upside wave B and then the wave C is gonna come later on. So typically what happens if I now look at this, if I just get rid of these waves, just to make this chart really clear, let's also get rid of uh, the indicators for a second because we're focused on the Elliott wave count, right? This wave B, what I'm anticipating is gonna probably come a bit later. And a wave B typically breaks down into three waves. What, what kind of three waves or ABC of a wave B? Yeah, it's called macro, intermediate and micro degree and then sub micro degree wave count. So it's waves within the waves, but this is all the psychology kind of playing out and this can give us valuable information and this is what top traders do top traders but you can also use this information by the way if you're not trading you're just buying the underlying token without any stop losses you can use this information to time to time your exits because most people ride that wave and then they've got a 10x a 7x a 20x a 50x but then the market does this and they lose all those x's and it goes back to maybe a 2x or 5x uh, so it's good to know how to take profits and you can use this information so now I'm going to put the waves on this one. So what we should anticipate is more of this particular, is it on closing the areas down here? Hold on two seconds. Oh, if I can get this here. There you go. A, B, and we look like we should be making some type of C, right? Because here is an A, B, C of a B, and then we should find a wave C. So let's just quickly do some analysis on what we should anticipate in the next couple of days and weeks with Ethereum, and then we'll just quickly look at the macro picture. And what's Ethereum likely to do in terms of price action on the more on a macro? Um, so let me just get. I just want to. What I want to do is just move it like this, right? Because what we're trying to do is see what's likely to occur. Okay, two things. One is a correction to the correction. A wave B is a correction to the wave A. So we want to measure this high to the low, and we want to move it to the right. Typical correction numbers is minimum of 50%, 62%, and 78.6. Which one of these trees is going to be likely? Ah, we can narrow it down. We can actually narrow it down. What we do is we actually measure wave C's very closely related, kind of sometimes a twin brother. What do I mean by that? Well, when you measure wave A, wave C often is very similar, right? And 
this is what this number is here. It's the 100%. Most typical is 100%, right? And let's go with the most typical. Sometimes it gets overextended, but the likelihood is we're gonna either get to here or maximum in this zone over here. But we can also get a further confirmation. This is the external retracement of wave B. Don't worry about, it. I'm doing these numbers quite fast. It's more that you just get the valuable information um, what's likely to occur and then 1.618, right? So we can see that the this one's more highly probable. So we're gonna draw two rectangles. Um, let's just do one last thing actually, just a quick time retracement. Then two, two time retracements, we're gonna go from this high to this low. We wanna be beyond this 50% minimum that this wave ABC takes. We're, we're beyond that already. So that's, that's thumbs up, 100% um, and 1.618 tends to be more towards the maximum. So we're kind of overextended with the time. So we just wanted to look at that, but more importantly, wave A, time taken to form wave A, is more often than not similar for wave C. So the next few days, we might just see a massive spike up in Ethereum, um, 1.618 in this zone. So why am I doing that? This is what we call quick fire analysis. Uh, in this zone here, it's probably going to be the maximum zone for a wave C high, and then the more highly probable because of this 100% is gonna be in this zone here. We can do some further time analysis to kind of get some, narrow it down even more, but we can just use the momentum indicators to give us a clue. So when this one, especially, if you look at how well the highs, this high and this high is, is married up relatively nicely, this low and this low, this high, you know, it's not perfect, but this one down up on the top one catches it a bit better, but it catches everyone. Right, so on the next bearish reversal, we it may coincide, and especially if both of them coincide, but we might get an up, down, and then up, and then this one will be up here. And if that if that reverses, that gives us a high probability wave C. So it's like a sorry, it's an it's an A B C of a wave B high. Uh, so the price that we're saying as a maximum is three thousand seven hundred. So shall we zoom out? Shall we zoom out on a macro picture and see what's the likelihood of Ethereum? Should, is it gonna hit 4,000 again? Is it gonna be 5,000, 10,000? Based on FIB extensions and FIB price analysis, which is the, the psychology of the markets. So let's just zoom out. Let's just zoom out. And let's just have a quick look. Let's have a quick look. Boom, boom. So we are looking at this on this scale here. We're really gonna focus on this part of the macro picture. So we're really zooming out here, really zooming out. So we're saying this is a one, two, a wave three, potential wave four forming, A, B, C. We're gonna just say, just for this argument's sake, for this projection, it's a bit of forecasting, right? But it's, it's for a bit of fun, a bit of entertainment, but we're just kind of saying, look, if the market unfolds, then we get more data. This is what we're gonna be doing nearer the time. So let's just say this zone here becomes the wave four. Then we can just go one, two, three, we're on this tree, but actually we're looking more at this as a, uh, where are we? We're on, we're on this one, two, three, four, boom. Here we're gonna go. Uh, I haven't got it marked on this chart, but what we're actually doing is we're looking from this point here. This was a one, two, three, what we're looking at as a four. So we're gonna measure this three high. We're gonna project it forward from this low. We're kind of guessing down here. Um, let's just say normally it goes into this way four zone. So let's go into that four zone. Let's just say, it just gets to the top of that zone here. And let's just do the two main projections for a wave five is 62% and 100%. More often than not, it overextends like we would have seen in 2016. Oh, I did some numbers earlier, didn't I? Um, let's just have a look. So here's 6,000, um, 1.618 is 9,000. 9, I don't think we've got any other numbers. There is one other number actually, let's, let's just quickly do. Um, for the fun of it, for the fun of it. Let's just do this extension. This is a bit of a fun one. I say a fun one. Let's see if I can get that, can I get it? Let me just try it one more time. Let's see if I can get it. Pump, pump, pump. There's a special number called 4.236. Bang, wave five don't tend to overextend over this. So this, if this is like a one, two, we've got this three, four, and then a five. This tends to be a really crucial number over here, which is 4.236, which is 7,200. So it looks like, you know, we've got a high probability of at least hitting this zone here, which is a 4,500 
um, Ethereum. That's very conservative. And now I am taking a lot of fundamentals into consideration with a lot of the things that are happening with Ethereum and previous cycles. So we're probably going to blast through this. Then this is a typical maximum um, for this kind of wave three, five of wave three, which is what we're going to probably anticipate in this four and a five. And then this number we'll pay attention to it as well. So that was just for fun, right? So $7,000 Ethereum is probable, but more towards the latter end of the year. Right now on a micro scale on the, on the like, right, like zooming in right now, uh, which is more important because we don't have control over those longer term pictures. Um, but what we want to do is just play the game. So next phase, next numbers to be very aware of is 3,200 and the 3,600 mark. If we hit the 3,600, the mark is going to get very optimistic. Um, however, we might likely see more of a correction. So two, three weeks of sideways to up and then a correction. So there you have it. Update on Ethereum. It's bullish. It's looking good. But be cautious that we might be still in this correction zone and that wave four hasn't confirmed. So let's do a quote of the day. Quote of the day. Here we go. This is from As A Man Thinketh. Right, Jim Rowan. Or oh, it says to Jim Rowan. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Don't wish for less challenges. Wish for more wisdom. Yeah. Very wise, very wise. If you like today's video, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, take my free crypto trading masterclass. It's going to help you with your Elliott Wave knowledge so you get more from my videos. See you soon.